I've been working on the rotations of rigid objects and it's really kind of complicated, but I want to show you a way that I have it worked out and it's going to be messy. Okay, so I'm not going to do a live coding here. Uh, so this is a, a, a rectangular cube that's rotating and flipping. So that cyan arrow represents the angular, angular velocity, which is not constant even though the angular momentum is. So you can see this flipping thing. Now, how do we get this to work? Well, really there's three ways we can do uh, rotations of rigid objects. I've already done two of them, but let me explain the other two without trying to erase stuff, even though I put too much stuff on the board already. Um, and then I'll talk about this method. So let's switch over here to the board. So if I have a rigid object, and here's my here's my my cube right there, and I want to rotate it about its uh, center of mass, that's what I want to do. Well, the first way that I could do that and I'm not going to go over this, but I, I will actually do this again later. I could represent this as a bunch of finite masses. I could pick eight masses and connect all those masses together by springs such that when they, when they start with some initial velocity and they try to move out of place, the spring force pulls them back into the place. I don't need angular momentum at all. I just use forces, spring forces, momentum, change of momentum, and everything, and I can make the whole thing rotate. And that's kind of awesome. Okay. That might be my favorite way, but that's one way to do it. Another way to do it that I showed before is to use finite masses and then find the moment of inertia tensor for this. So here's the moment of inertia tensor for a solid, but imagine it was just point masses. It would look a little bit different. And then I'm going to use the following. I'm going to say L is I omega. Right? So the moment of inertia tensor operated on the angular velocity vector gives me the angular momentum vector. If the angular momentum vector is constant and I find the inverse of the moment of inertia tensor, then I can say omega is I inverse L. And so since L is constant, uh, what I'm going to do is to use the angular velocity, rotate all my stuff, recalculate the inverse of the moment of inertia, and then find the new uh, operate that on the angular momentum, which is constant, and find the new angular velocity. So each step, move it, calculate the new angular velocity, move it, calculate the new angular velocity. I did that. Now the problem there is that you're calculating the inverse of that tensor every time. So you need to recalculate the tensor every time, the moment of inertia tensor every time. And that's a problem because suppose I have a uniform object like this and I want to calculate the moment of inertia tensor in some odd orientation with respect to x, y, z axis. That's not so trivial. Okay. So now we're going to do the third way to find the motion of a rigid object. This involves a solid object like this rectangular cube. Okay. So suppose I have that and I want to make it rotate. Well, there, I'm going to do the similar thing. right? I want to do something like this but I don't want to find the inverse of the moment of inertia tensor every time the object moves. I mean, I kind of do. I do, but I don't, have to, I don't have to integrate every time. So here's what we're going to do. Instead, we're going to write the moment of inertia. We're going to find the initial moment of inertia tensor. This is the initial moment of inertia tensor for this rectangular cube that's A by B by C. So it's diagonal, and that doesn't really matter, but that just makes it a little bit easier. And then what I'm going to do, let's say I have that initial tensor, I can find, I can rotate that moment of inertia tensor to find a new moment of inertia tensor. In fact, I could find the inverse of that. So I have the inverse moment of inertia tensor. That's not too hard to find. I just find the inverse. And then if I want to find the new, I can rotate that every time. So I'm going to say I inverse is this rotation matrix I not inverse rotation matrix transpose. So I'm going to take these two rotation matrices and rotate my initial inverse matrix to get my new. And then I can go back over here and find my new angular velocity so I can do that again. So instead of recalculating the moment of inertia tensor every time, I'm just going to do it once and then rotate it. I'm going to keep rotating my, yeah, balloons. Let's do balloons. Come on. Balloons. Why did I do balloons? I don't know. But I like that. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, how do you rotate a matrix? I think that Web v Python might have uh, the ability to do this because it, it essentially does. Um, and, you know, there's another issue with 
the other way I was doing this in that it you mm, so you can use these rotations using Euler angles and but the problem is that those are kind of uh, uh, invariant not invariant but they they give you ambiguous results sometimes so there's another way to rotate stuff with quaternions, quater, quaternions um, which is a vector plus a scalar, essentially what it is. Um, and that's what this matrix comes from, this rotation matrix comes from. Okay, So this gives it, you give uh, R depends on two things. R depends on U and theta. So I give it a vector and an angle. And that's exactly this, the way things were rotated in WebVPython. So when you want to do a rotation, you give, well, actually you give an origin, an angle, and an axis, and it rotates things. That's how I can rotate those boxes graphically, but I want to calculate it too. So if I want to rotate this matrix right here to find it, I need to use, I need to create these two rotation matrices, and they're, that's that, okay? So it's a mess. So we calculate C, cosine theta, S sine theta, one minus C, there's my U vector, and then I get this whole thing. And then I have to take the transpose of it. So I operate these two, and then I, on the transpose, and then I operate on that, and I get my rotated, my rotated inverse. And then, I know it's a lot, and then I can operate it on L, which is constant, to find omega, and then I can use omega to rotate my object. And then I use omega, to rotate the inverse. I know it's a mess. Now, I do want to point out one other thing. How do we represent a matrix in the Python? Because Python has the NumPy arrays that are that are a matrix, but in the Python we don't have a matrix, but we do have a vector. There's a couple of options to do this. Uh, so I hope you wrote that down, because I didn't. Uh, so how do we treat a matrix in Python. Here's what I do. I'm going to make the matrix A. Let's just represent this as A X X A X Y A X Z A Y X A Y Y A Y Z A Z X A Z Y A Z Z. So that's that's my matrix, right? How do I represent that though? I'm going to represent that as the vector, as a list, AX, AY, AZ, where these are vectors. So I'm going to make a list of vectors, because we have the vector class built in, that really makes it nice. So just so you can see, AX would be the vector, I'll write it as this, vector AXX, AXY, AXZ. Oops. So each one of the, so this is a, a list of vectors to represent that, which is kind of nice because then I can use the dot product when I do matrix multiplication. I can make up a, you know, I can do a vector, a matrix vector multiplication definition too. I can take the transpose. I need to build all those things in WebVPython. So let's go over all this messy code. So it is a little messy, and I want you don't want you to freak out. Okay. So, and I, I made many errors here. Let's just look at all my definitions. I'm going to give you the code. Of course, I'm going to give you the code. You know I'm going to give you the code. So right here, I have my just my parameters for my uh, my solid, right? The mass, A, B, C, length, and so forth like that. This is the moment of inertia tensor because what I'm doing is, did you not even see that? I think, I think my thing's too big. Okay, so they, these are my parameters for my, my matrix right there, my, my mass. It's the mass and then the lengths of the three sides. The moment, the initial moment of inertia tensor right here, what I'm doing is I'm just using that m over 12 and then I, I calculate my components, b squared my, plus c squared, zero, zero, and so forth like that, and then return it. See so here, here's that matrix, I, C, because it's called, I'm just calling it the cube. Um, and it's the x component, the y, the x vector, the y vector, the z vector. Right here, I'm just drawing the cube. I'm making it an actual 3D object so I can rotate it. And then omega is my initial angular velocity vector. Now, I need a couple things. Uh, I need some properties, right? I want to find the inverse of a matrix. I need to find the inverse of that matrix, and I want to make it as general as possible. And so 
I need to find the determinant of the matrix. So this is just the determinant of a matrix. Now, one thing I did cheat here because the moment of inertia tensor is symmetric, right? So the whatever I, X, Y we have, I, Y, X is the same thing. So I don't have to, I don't have to, I can make some simplifications of my code. So what I do is I take my, mate, my vector, my matrix A, and then I find these values A, B, C, D, E, G, and I, I should have said F, but I said G, I don't know why. So those are the only six values I need. I don't need all nine. And then this is just the formula I looked up for the determinant of a three by three matrix that's symmetric right there. And that returns that value. Then to find the inverse, I need the determinant, which I just found. And then I need those components again. And then again, I looked up a value for how to calculate one over D. And then we have that vector and I return it as a vector. So it does give me the vector in the inverse of that matrix. This is a function that takes the matrix A operating on the vector B. So each component is just a dot product. So that's pretty easy to do. This is that mess of a, of a thing. That's my rotation matrix. So I have a vector U and an angle theta. Um, and then so I just find that I, I did this because I copied the code from ChatGPT because I didn't want to type it out. And this is what ChatGPT did. So that I'm in letting you know I didn't do that, but I I know I could type that in. I just it was too much typey type. I didn't want to type it all, which is ChatGPT is pretty good for that kind of stuff. I mean, you don't want to use ChatGPT in a way that you have no idea what's going on. That's bad. Okay, but I, I mean I don't I didn't derive the rotation matrix, so that's bad. But you know it it works. That tests it out. It does work. Here I have. Uh, the transpose of the matrix. I'm going to need that for RT. So this is pretty easy, right? I'm just taking my vectors on my on my rows and I'm, I'm, I'm switching them. So I can just go through each one. The vector, the M0 is my first vector. So these are all the X components and I'm going to make that as my first. So they're all X components and the next one's all Y components and the last one's all Z components. Mat mole is a matrix multiplication. It takes the matrix A and operates it on B. So I, when, in order to make use of the vector dot product built into WebVPython, I wanted to uh, take the columns of vector of matrix B and make them a bunch of vectors, right? So these are my column vectors. So then I can take uh, A dot B like that. And then bloop, 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 make and it doesn't make those noises. I made the noises. And then I don't know why I called it out X, out Y, out Z, but that's what I did. Okay, so I already have I. I already have omega, right? So now I can find the angular momentum for that system. I need that because that's constant. That doesn't change. And then I take the inverse uh, of the matrix. And this is called I cube inverse. So you call whatever you want. That's what I'm going to call it. Okay, it's the inverse of IC. And so I need that because that's the matrix I'm going to rotate. And that's really important because if it's a complicated matrix, then I don't have to redo that every single time because the integrals could be, you know, not doable really. Just imagine uh, a cube that's rotated and you're trying to find the moment of inertia tensor. Boo, that'd be hard. Okay, so this rotation helps with that. And here's my time, my time step. Um, this is, I think I was just testing out here. You don't need that stuff right there. Uh, w scale is omega, right? That's, I'm going to draw that angular velocity vector. Uh, I'm going to draw it in real space. So in real space, that doesn't have a length. So I need to kind of like scale it to a correct length. This, this makes sure that the vector doesn't get too big or too small. Um, and that's what that's for. And then W arrow is omega arrow. And that's the angular velocity arrow. Okay, let's get to the code. It's not so bad now. It's really not too bad. So the first thing I do is I rotate the cube. That's just a graphical step, right? I'm just actually rotating it. So in WebVPython, you can rotate anything with this dot rotate. I think you can rotate vectors, and, and I think you could use that uh, to make your rotation matrix because I'm pretty sure that's what WebVPython does. I tried it, and I couldn't get it to work, but I think it has to do with columns versus rows on my matrices, so it's my problem. But uh, So I rotate the cube. Next, I calculate that R vector, right? I want to calculate that based on omega. So I'm using the axis omega for the axis of rotation. And then I use theta, which would be omega t, 
dt times for the angle, right? So magnitude of omega is the amount it rotates, and then I have the vector omega. And I think that this should be a unit vector, but I unit vectorize it in the rotation matrix uh, anyway, so it's fine. In my rotation function, so it's fine. And then I take the transpose of that, because I need both of those, and then I can find the new inverse uh, moment of inertia. It uses the old inverse right there, right? So this takes, uh, wrote, this does the transpose operated on this, so it's a double, it's a double matrix multiplication, which I know it looks kind of complicated, but it's just a matrix multiplication as a vector, and then I multiply it again. So this right here, that's one of the vector matrices, and I operate that with RT, so it's not that bad. Okay, and then I, once I have I inverse, I can use I inverse to find the new angular, I can find the new angular velocity, right? Because I'm just using constant angular momentum, and that should work just fine. And then this just re-updates the arrow, and then that runs it. So that's that. There you go. Rotation of a rigid object. Let's run it again. And I, you know, I think it's working right. I, I really haven't tested, but I wanted to make this video because otherwise I'm going to make some mistakes. I was going to do a whole bunch of quatern quaternions, but I can't say that word very well. Uh, and, and it turns out that it is in vPython, right? That's where that rotate comes in. And so it does it in a way that rotates uh, well behaved. And so that's pretty cool. Okay, the end. Um, one thing I should probably do is uh, rotate a flat disk because my flat disk before was exploding and I think it was because of, uh, it, would, it would fall under the class of gimbal locks where uh, the, the rotation gives you gives an ambiguous rotation uh, for the inverse. You, technically what was happening was you'd get the inverse of the matrix would be uh, uh, undetermined, right? Because you get a, a terminate of zero, so. Okay, code down below. Uh, I do want to make, I wanted to say one more thing. This method, you can use a rigid object that's uniform, and I could apply a torque. I want to build, I don't know that I will, but I want to build the gyroscope precession model, right? So you have a spinning gyroscope and it, and it processes. I'd like to do that, I think I can. Uh, let's just see, but this will be in there. So it's a messy code, but you can play around with it and make it better, and I'll talk to you later. That's that, the end.